Like always, want to thank you guys for coming and covering uh, Penn State football. Um, I was looking for Neil. Is Neil here? And even Neil. Yeah, appreciate all you guys cover, coming and covering Penn State football and even Neil. That was a joke, Neil. Not funny, huh? Everybody laughed. Yeah, nobody laughed. <laughs> nobody laughed. Uh, want to thank the fans. Obviously, 110,000. Uh, awesome. We just get such unbelievable support week in and week out. We don't take that for granted. Um, you know, our defense, a couple things to kind of jump out about them. I think our third quarter defense all year has been, been ridiculous. Uh, 87 yards all year on 46 plays, 1.9 yards per play. Um, I think this, this game, we held UCLA to minus nine yards in the, thir in the third quarter. Uh, so that was significant. Really cool to see Liam Clifford uh, with over 100 yards today. So now you, you watch on tape, Trey, Trey has beat people. Um, um, Omari, obviously, is, is an issue. Uh, Liam showing up, Julian showing up, the tight end showing up, the running back. So it uh, makes it difficult when they're not sure who they can or will take away in the game. Uh, but great to see Liam have his first 100-yard 100, 100 game. Uh, Penn State is 5-0 and for the fourth straight year. We're the only school in the country uh, to start 5-0 and in each of the last four years, and it's the first time that that's happened in school history, so something we take a lot of pride in. And then our defense has held Big Ten opponents under 100 yards rushing in four straight games in 15 of the last 16 games, so that was, that was cool. Uh, having Paz back was great. Um, um, you know, getting a chance to be with him and his wife and his kids uh, was, was really cool. Obviously, great linebacker here at Penn State and LBU. And then Juravicious as well. Hasn't been back in a long time and was with us this week. Obviously, daughter is killing it, uh, is killing it with our volleyball team. So great having these lettermen back and spending time with them. We won the, we won the um, explosive play battle, not by much, but we did. Uh, we won the third down bat battle. We won the sack battle. Uh, we won the starting field position battle. And then the big one, which I'm not sure who it was specifically, a bunch of you guys, to be honest with you. Um, but most importantly, uh, the penalty battle. We had two penalties in the game for 20 yards. That was, that was big. We talked about the importance of getting that cleaned up uh, now that we're in Big Ten plays. So that's a step in the right direction that we got to build on. So. Overall, a lot of good things to celebrate. Um, again, we appreciate the fans. We appreciate your support. And I'll open up to questions. Start with Mark. We'll James, how do you think the offense adjusted to not having Nick? And Neil was wondering if you could give us a status update on Nick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we, um, we, I thought we'd have him Thursday. I thought we'd have him Friday. I thought we'd have him today. I didn't find out until after warm up. Jay Wan and Andy Mutton came into my office, uh, excuse me, came into the locker room and, and told me. So literally it was a last minute deal. I mean, obviously not having a guy like, like Nick Singleton um, uh, is significant, but it was a tremendous opportunity for Katron to get a few more touches. And it was also a great opportunity to get Quinton in there. So, um, you know, it really, really good opportunity for those two guys, and I think overall we handle it well. Jared, to the left. Hey, Coach Franklin. Hey, Jared. How's it going? Good. Um, Tyler Warren, another week, another touchdown for him. Uh, what makes him so dependable for you guys, especially in the red zone? I think that's the word. He's, he's dependable. I mean, the guy does his job and does it on a consistent basis, whether it's blocking, whether it's running with the ball as a ball carrier, whether it's as a receiver. And again, I think you guys have heard me talk about this a lot, but when they can't put Tyler Warren into a category, that's what makes tight ends most valuable. Um, you know, if he's just a receiver, they can, they can treat him like a receiver and treat it as 10 personnel. Uh, if he's just kind of a big run blocking slug, then that's not a threat either. But when he can do either or, um, makes it very, very difficult to, to, to defend and then to your point, he's dependable. You know, you throw the ball in his direction, he's gonna catch it and he's gonna break tackles, he's gonna make positive yards. So 
Um, you know, again, I think he's the best tight end in college football, and I think his, his play warrants that. Tyler and then Andrew. Hi, James. Hey, Tom. Um, today, we, uh, you told us a few days ago that you looked at a high school film for, for Justin Martin because he didn't have any much on, on, on the college level. He had some success early in the game. What did you pick up from him defensively over the course of that first half, and how do you think your defense was to adjust to Tom Allen? Yeah, I was impressed with him. You know, he's a, I'm not sure how tall he is, but looking at him in, in pregame, he's a big guy. Um, he seemed very poised. Um, the moment didn't seem too big for him. First time starting quarterback. Um, and talking to their head coach before the game, uh, on, you know, on the catapult, he's run 21 miles an hour. So if you're talking about a big guy who can run, uh, who was poised. So I, I was impressed with that guy. I, I really was. Um, and I thought, you know, again, when you're preparing all week and you don't have any film of a guy, that, that can make it a little bit interesting. But overall, our starting defense held a Big Ten opponent to three points. You know, they scored a point there late with a lot of backups in. Um, they scored a touchdown there late with a lot of backups in. Uh, in today's day and age, you know, keeping people to a field goal is difficult to do. And I thought our defense, you know, did a nice job. There's some things, obviously, we've got to get cleaned up. The big explosive play. Uh, you know, we did not run with the tailback in man coverage, the guy that had him in man coverage. Um, and that obviously is going to hurt you every single time if they find him. So that was a huge play in the game. But besides that, I thought overall we played well. Andrew, back left. Coach, you mentioned a couple of yards in third quarters this year. What, what's been the difference in the third quarter? Why have you been so successful at adjusting? I, th I think really in my time, we've been pretty good in the second half in general. I think to me, I'm, I'm more I'm more interested in, in making sure that we're starting faster. Um, you know, I think that first quarter, you look at the time of possession, not what you want. You look at third down on offense and on defense, not what you want. Again, back to the point I have had with you guys earlier about getting enough touches and getting enough plays on offense and getting off the field on defense. So we got we got to start faster. But defensively, I think, you know, you get a good feel for who they are. You get them settled down. You make some adjustments. Um, and I think that's for the biggest reason why we've been able to play really good third quarter football. I think the technology has helped with that as well. Uh, but, but overall, getting our guys lined up, getting their cleats in the ground, getting them ready to play. I think we've done a nice job of that uh, with both, both, you know, offense and defensive staff. Spencer here on the left. James, it seemed that the receivers were being targeted more frequently today. How much of that has had to do with Nick um, not being available? More frequently, you said? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I didn't feel that way or, or notice that. Um, I felt like we called it the way you know we have been calling it, but you may be right. I'd have to go back and check that. Um, I, I don't. I don't know. It was. It wasn't like we made a change. Literally, again, we didn't find out until until after warm up that we didn't have Nick. So it's not not enough time to kind of change your game plan. And with Katron and Quentin, we don't really feel like we have to. Let's go two more. We'll go Pickle and Neil. Coach, uh, right. with Ryan Parker, what made what went into your decision, decision rather to make him your uh, starting place kicker today? And with Zion Tracy, what did he do to earn that spot at punt returner with K uh, K now? Yeah, so uh, with Barker, like I mentioned to you guys, I think last week it, it came down to a percentage point um, all during training camp uh, between those two guys. So we felt like this week um, you know, we would look at all those guys as well. But it wouldn't just be this week. It would be this week plus uh, the totality of everything that's happened the entire year. So um, based on it being a, a tight competition already and then how the games have gone, uh, from a production and execution standpoint in that phase, we felt like you know it made sense to, to give Barker his opportunity because again it was within a percentage point anyway. What was the other part? Uh, Tracy, a punt returner. What did he do? Yeah, so that? Tracy had been a part of that competition kind of all year long. Um, we did not have Caden available, uh, and, and he was the next man up. Um, you know, Jake Spencer still factors in, so we used him in the safe situation where you're probably not going to get a return anyway. Just a guy who's caught some balls already in college games. Uh, but Zion, we think I, we think he'll learn from this today and have an opportunity to not only catch the ball moving forward, but have a chance to be a playmaker. So uh, excited about that. Neil, close this out. Neil. Hey, James. 
if you're now tuning in a helicopter, it was great, huh? Um, I was going to call you and land in your backyard. <laughs> um, the uh, two-minute drill, how much did you think that gave you guys a, a boost with uh, Drew connecting to get the touchdown uh, right in front of the half? Yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job of that all year long, points right before the half. We talk about the middle eight and things like that. that that's been, I think, really good for us all, all year long. I think the other thing that, that I'm very proud of in terms of the players and offense and defensive coaches is we want to have all of our timeouts available at the end of the first half and at the end of the game. Uh, and there's value in that. There's power in that. So um, I think the combination of two minutes and 40 seconds or whatever it is in the game with all three timeouts, that's a ton of time. It allowed us to start out not in a traditional two minute but have some urgency to us. And then after the two minute warning, we were planning on going to two minute right there. And with it being a third down, we just used that as a timeout with the two minute warning, uh, get what we wanted called and, and then go from there. And then if we didn't pick it up, it also allowed us to burn some time off the clock uh, and get the two minute warning out of the uh, equation for them if they were getting the ball back. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thanks coach. Thanks guys.